What's up guys, Josh here from the Tabletop Knights and today we are playing some Wingspan Digital. So obviously at the moment we are a Australian board game channel but we are stuck inside due to uh, COVID still wreaking havoc here a little bit. Um, but there is a really nice visual uh, online adaptation visually and the way it plays um, so I thought I'd take a, a bit of time today to show you guys how it all plays I am recording this via twitch uh, so hopefully the sounds okay um, hopefully it all comes out fine but uh, I figure for the first uh, recording I'll do a uh, I'll do a playthrough with the AI uh, just to show how the game works um, in the online adaptation. Uh, for those of you who haven't played Wingspan, I'll try to explain as best I can how the game plays. Uh, it is a beautiful game um, in, in the board game sense. Um, made by Stonemaier Games, uh, they've done a fantastic job with the components. Uh, people have their opinions on, on the game itself. It is an engine builder game, and I'll, I'll show how that all works once we get into it. Um, I personally really like it. Um, my girlfriend really likes the game as well. Um, and yeah, due to that, I, I thought I'd play uh, the, the visual, the, the um, online adaptation. I don't know why I keep calling it a, a, a visual adaptation. I'm not sure why I keep doing that, but <laughs> we'll get through it. Um, I'm just going to start a custom game. So I'm going to play a three-player uh, game with the AI. Um, we're going to leave the goal map as they are if you play um, against online opponents. Uh, the order here, you can change between random and custom. Uh, I assume that is custom, so I'll leave it as it is. I'm the blue player here, we've got red and green as well, uh, and this will be kind of a learn how to play, uh, this, this first one. So we'll get into it, and I'll explain how the game works. Alright, so opening screen here, so in Wingspan there are four rounds, each round consists of, well round one consists of eight turns, round two is seven, round three is six, and round four is five turns. Um, the reason being is because you use these little kind of action cubes when you play the actual board game to drop an action cube on your board each time you take an action. So it's kind of like the timer. And after you've used all eight of your action cubes in round one, you then take one of your action cubes and actually score the bonus goal. So I'll show you how the bonus goal works, but you use the cubes to actually score um, whoever fir whoever's first, second or third. And obviously, as you use those cubes to score your end of round bonus goals, uh, you then have one less cube to use for the following round. It's kind of how that's, that works in the board game sense. But basically, um, the game is, is an engine builder. You're trying to gain as many points um, as possible to then be the high, highest scoring player come the end of the game. Um, there are a number of ways you can score points, and I'll get to that. Uh, for the time being, I will choose my opening hand. And the way that works is you get to keep five things. And when I say things, either bird cards or food tokens. So here down the bottom, you'll see five different types of food tokens. There are berries, fish, grubs, mice, and grain. And then I have five bird cards here um, in front of me. I can choose to keep all five bird cards if I want to. I can choose to keep all five food tokens if I want to. Or I can split it, which generally you would, and keep you know a couple of bird cards and a few food or vice versa. You want to kind of keep food so you can play birds early. And the reason is the more birds you play, the better your engine will start to work for the following turns after that. And I'll show you how that works once we actually get into the game. Let me just drop this down a little bit, a bit bright. I'm a bit see-through. 
we go. It's a bit better. Um, okay, so uh, I'll, I won't go into this too much. I'll pick my cards and explain what my, my thoughts were behind it. You also get given two bonus cards at the start. So in the board game, you get given the, your, your starting bird cards, your starting uh, food resources, and the two bonus cards that you're working kind of towards um, by the end of the game. So here I have two bonus cards, one being a visionary leader and birds in your hand at the end of the game. So this means that at the end of the game, I have to have either five to seven birds to get four victory points or eight plus birds to get seven victory points. Over here, we have the food web expert. And this is birds that eat only grubs. It actually tells you at the bottom of this card that only 9% of the cards in the whole game are birds that only eat grubs. However, the victory points that you get for that is, is quite good. So you get two victory points per bird that you play that only eat grubs. So any bird with a grub symbol and no other symbols. If we go back to our bird cards here, do I have any of those to start with? No, I don't. So here under the biome in which you play the bird, it tells you what food you need to pay to actually play it onto your board. So this snowy um, egret, hopefully I said that right, uh, needs either a fish or a grub. It's got the line there to suggest one or the other, but some birds require multiple foods. So the yellow bellied sap sucker here requires a berry and a grub. The double crested uh, cormorant, these, these, <laughs> these birds have complex names, requires a food source of any type and a fish to play that. So going back to my bonus cards here, I feel like this visionary leader card may be easier for me to complete looking at my starting hand. So I'm going to go ahead and select that as my bonus card here. So what I want is I want to have a nice card drawing engine to allow me to have plenty of birds in my hand come the end of the game. Now we look at our cards here. So we have uh, the, I'll explain the dynamics of a bird card. So we've got the biome in which you play it. There are three types of biomes and I'll get into those, but it's basically forest, like a wheat field biome and a water biome. So this, this first bird card over here requires, uh, needs to be played in water, in the water biome. It requires either a fish or a grub to play. It is worth four victory points at the end of the game. This is the type of nest. Now off the top of my head, I can't actually remember uh, the different nest names, but uh, that's the type of nest that it needs to be played in. Under that, it actually has the wingspan of the bird. So it has a wingspan of 104 centimeters. Now, this isn't always that relevant in this game. However, there are some bird cards that are hunting birds, which says something like, when activated, flip the top card of the deck. If its wingspan is below 75 centimeters, tuck the bird under this card, for example. And that's where wingspan can be relevant in this game. And then each card has a effect. Now, all of these starting cards in my hand have a when activated effect. That isn't always the case. There are some when played effects. There are also some effects that trigger when your opponents do something in particular. Now, a when activated effect is an effect that takes place when you do an action in that biome. So for example, if I had this card on my board and I then use the action of the water biome, which is a card drawing action, this would then trigger. So how it works in real life in the board game sense is you put your cube, your action cube, on the furthest right space next to your, um, your bird in that row. So you put it there and then it might be draw two bird cards, for example. You draw your two bird cards, then you move your cube down the row to the next bird. If it has a when activated effect, it triggers. So that's what a when activated effect does. And I'll show you how that works in game. So I've blabbered on for a bit for about 10 minutes here. I'll now go ahead and actually choose my card. So I know in the back of my mind, I'm going for kind of a card drawing engine type build if I'm going to work towards my bonus goal. Up here is also end of round goals, which I'll get to. 
but basically well i may as well go through it now <laughs> while i'm at it so this first little token here means that the amount of eggs laid on birds with this nest so in my starting hand i have one bird here with that type of nest a chipping sparrow here so the second end of round goal is the amount of birds you have in the water biome so simple enough to understand this third one is the amount of eggs laid on birds in this biome here so in my starting hand only the chipping sparrow can actually be played into that biome and then this last one is a bit complex but it's sets of three eggs in water uh, the grain biome and the forest biome <clears throat> what that means is let's say you have a bird in each biome you have to have you know if you i have one egg laid on each of those birds that's a set of one point and then it's basically whoever scores the most sets so that that was a bit complex but it's you kind of get used to it once you start so snowy egret here when activated roll all dice not in the bird feeder if any of them are fish gain one fish and cash in on this card so fish um cached food on a on a bird is worth a victory point every food on a bird card at the end of the game is worth a victory point we have the wood duck when activated draw two cards if you do discard one at the end of your turn straight away i'm looking at this and i'm like that's a pretty good option for my end of round goal because it's a it's a bit of a card drawing engine You've got the yellow bellied sap sucker when activated gain one grub from the supply i quite like those kind of cards because you're basically gaining free food which is which is really nice uh double crested cormorant which is when activated discard a fish to tuck two two cards from the deck behind this bird so that's worth two victory points every time it's triggered don't mind it maybe and then we have the chipping sparrow which when it's activated lay an egg on any bird i don't mind that one at all either i actually quite like the duck i quite like these three um the sparrow and the yellow bellied sap sucker if i play them both in say the forest biome every time i use a gain food action i'll then also be laying an egg and be gaining an extra food so i quite like that and i like the wood duck just because it's a bit of a card drawing engine which is kind of what i'm going for here so i think i'll keep all three here now i can only keep two food if that's the case so looking at what i want to play nice and early i think i want to try and get this yellow bellied sap sucker out first so i probably want to keep a berry and the grub that will allow me to play that card basically straight away so that's going to be my starting five things that i'm going to keep and now we proceed all right so um it is now my turn uh we can see what they've chosen to keep here i am the first player sorry the uh, sun is wreaking havoc apologize victor who will be editing this video the sun is wreaking havoc um i'll try and sort it out so it's now my turn i'm the first player uh this is basically what the board looks like in the actual board game itself similar anyway not exactly it has some graphics and everything but this is the general layout of the board You've got your three biomes along the side here. You've got your forest, your your wheat biome, your grain biome, and your, your water biome. The forest is all about drawing food from the bird feeder. Here on the right, you can see what food is available to draw. Currently, there is two fish, there is a, a mouse, there is potentially two grain or a grub as well. So those are the options that I have to me if I wanted to gain food round one. As people gain food, this is going to deplete if there, are, if, if there is ever no dice left in the bird feeder or only one um, face of a dice. So for example, only, only fish are left or only mice are left or only grain are left. You can actually re-roll them. So that's how that works. The middle biome here is all about laying eggs. So every time you take this action here, you lay two eggs on a bird. And then down the bottom is all about drawing cards. 
But every time you play a bird in a biome, it's going to take this spot here. And then every time you use that action, you then use it from the next slot over. And it makes your actions more powerful the more you build up uh, your boards. So, let's take our turn. So we have our food here. We have a berry and a grub in storage. And we know turn one, I think we want to play this yellow-bellied sap sucker in our forest biome. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pay the cost. It tells you a little bit about the bird. And that's my first turn. Now, usually if you're playing an online game, you're going to have to probably wait anywhere between maybe one to three minutes on your um, other players to take a turn. As we're playing the AI, they basically take a turn straight away, so it comes around to me fairly quickly. But it tells you what they've done. So, um, the green player drew bird cards, and the red player gained food. And we can actually click over to them and see, you know, what food they have in their supply. We obviously can't see what uh, bird cards they have in their hand, because that's secret information until they play it on their, bo uh, on their board. But... Now, someone gained food and they took uh, the grain, I believe, that was there. So, this is the, the food that is that is left. Like the bird facts, that's fun. And that the birds are animated. They are animated, which is quite cool. I think they've done a really good job with that in this um, digital adaptation. So, it's now turn two. I don't have any food left so i actually can't play any birds out of my hand so now i've got to make a decision do i want to gain food to potentially play more b birds do i want to lay some eggs now the reason you want to lay eggs on birds is for one they're worth victory points and two it allows you to play more birds into the row uh into a row sorry so here you can see there is an egg symbol that egg symbol means that when I play a bird into this column here, into the second column, no matter what row I play it in, it'll cost me one egg. I need to pay an egg from one of my birds. So that's how that works. Um, so you want, you want to start laying eggs on your birds where possible. Um, so do I do that here? Maybe. Do I need to draw bird cards? I don't think so. I've got birds in my hand that I want to play, so I don't think I'll be drawing bird cards. So I'm thinking... If I want to play my chipping sparrow anytime soon, I'm going to need a grub or a grain, which there is in the bird feeder, which is nice. Uh, there is not enough food here to be playing this wood duck anytime soon, so I probably want to aim to play this sparrow as soon as I can. One thing to note is that if I play the sparrow, say I gain food, I play the sparrow next turn, the turn after, sorry, I won't be able to gain, uh, play the sparrow next turn because I'll need to lay eggs before I can play it which is fine. So I think the plan here is to let's uh, gain food. I'll take a grain. And so in the real board game, how this would be replicated is I'd be placing a cube here to say, all right, I'm going to gain food. I can also discard a card here to gain an extra food if I want to. That's what this symbol here means. I didn't want to do that because I want to keep these cards currently. So you play, you gain your food, you take it from the bird feeder, happy days. Then the cube gets moved down the row. It gets moved to the yellow-bellied sapsucker. Then this activates. When activated, gain one grub from the supply. So I'm gaining a free grub here. I'm gaining a free food, which is great. So I basically gained two food instead of one on my turn. And that's my turn done. Green player gained food and red player also gained food. So they're gaining plenty of food to start, which makes me think they're probably going to play some big um, big birds or big scoring birds or birds with really powerful effects. Generally, the birds with the best effects and that score the most points require a fair bit of food to actually play. Not always, but most of the time. Um so now I have the food required to pay this uh, to play this chipping sparrow, but I don't have the eggs required unless I could play this chipping sparrow in the egg laying biome. 
So if I do that, it, it's for free. I don't have to pay an egg. But I quite like the thought of actually playing it in this biome. Hmm. Because every time I'll gain food, I'll also be able to lay an egg at the same time. Which to me, I feel like works really well. No Oceania, Oceania bird option. I don't think it's in the game currently, Greg, to answer your question. Why didn't the dice reset? Aren't they all common? So, sorry about the sun again. As I said, I'm going to be moving this up and down a fair bit. Um, so, to answer your question, Claire, why didn't the dice reset? So, if we look at the bird feeder, there is only one food left in the bird feeder. It is a mouse. The reason why it hasn't reset is because the, the last person to actually gain food didn't want to reset it. Now, it's, it's your option whether you want to re-roll the dice or not. So the person before me may have, you know, wanted to gain one of the food that was left. But if I was to take a gain food action... Yeah, but you don't have to. So if I was to gain a... If I was to use a gain food action now... I could choose to either take the mouse or re-roll and then gain food. They all selected food. There was only one left after your turn. Uh, no, so it's my turn now. So on my turn, last turn, there was a um, two fish left, I think, and a mouse, right? Then the green player used, uh, chose to gain food. Now, let's say, for argument's sake, well, we know the green player took one fish, right? So then there was a fish and a mouse left. And then the red player took the other fish. So now there's just a mouse left. Now, if I was to then gain food, I could re-roll. There was only one left after your turn and you took the two fish. I didn't take the two fish. I, don't, I haven't gained any food and taken any fish. The last two players each took a fish each. So I haven't gained any food yet. If I was to gain food, I could choose to re-roll. Uh, but I'm not going to gain food this turn. I'm either going to lay eggs or I'm going to play this sparrow. So I think I might lay eggs here. So I'm going to lay two eggs, right? So click on birds to lay eggs. So I'm just going to lay both the eggs on this bird here. Down the bottom of the card here, it tells you how many eggs that um, bird can have on it at one at any given time. So I've had my turn, they've had their turn. So what have they done? They've gained more food and someone played a bird. So you can see now, Claire, that this has been reset because the person that gained food didn't want the mouse re-rolled all the dice and then took one of the food options that came up on the dice and then this player here played a red-shouldered hawk so if we look at this red-shouldered hawk this is an example of a bird that hunts so every time this person now gains food they look at the top card from the deck if it's under 75 centimeters in wingspan tuck it behind this bird if it's not discarded every time a bird is tucked behind this card it's worth one victory point all right, so we've laid our eggs. Now we can play a bird in this biome. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Chipping Sparrow in the forest biome. I'm going to pay using a grub. So I can pay using a grub or a grain. Looking forward into the future, I want to play this wood duck at some point. So I want to keep my grain if possible. So I'm going to go ahead and just pay the grub. Now it tells me to click on a bird from any habitat to spend an egg. So I need to now spend an egg from this yellow-bellied sapsucker to play it. So for some reason, it didn't have the little audio. Oh, I think it didn't have the audio on what the bird is and where it's found and stuff because I think I've got the setting turned on where it only explains the bird if it's the first time you've played it. You can change that to be every time, but um, yeah, that's why it didn't. So, the green player played a bird in their grain biome, and this player lays some eggs. So, we can go across and have a look at what they played. Ah, so the scissor-tailed flycatcher. This is the box bird. So, this is the bird actually displayed on the front cover of the game. Uh, and 
every time so you can see what it costs to play a, a berry and two grubs so quite a big cost there but it's also worth eight victory points by itself at the end of the game now every time this player takes the lay eggs action you'll, every player will gain a grub from the supply which is good for everyone all right so we've got two birds here we want to play our wood duck at some point our end goal this round is to lay eggs on birds with this nest so maybe we can think about laying uh, eggs on this bird as well but what do we need to play the wood duck well we need a berry and we need a grain and lucky for us if we use a gain food action this turn there is a berry and a grain in the bird feeder so that's perfect for us so we're going to gain some food we're going to take a berry and we're going to take a grain perfect for us and now these other two effects are going to trigger after we do this as well so now it goes down the line when activated lay one egg on any bird now i'm going to lay it on itself because looking at our goal we want eggs laid on birds with this type of nest and we gain a grub from the supply as well so this is a nice little engine already that we're starting to build so every time we're gaining food, we're, we're gaining food from the bird feeder, but we're also gaining an extra grub and we're laying an egg as well. So the green player decided to lay eggs and the red player decided to gain food. So when the green player here laid eggs, if we remember what the scissor tailed flycatcher effect was, is all players gain a grub from the supply every time he lays eggs. So... I've gained a free grub. So now I've got a berry, two grubs, and two wheat. We've got plenty of food. So now I've got the food required to play this wood duck. Now a decision needs to be made. Do I want to play the wood duck in my forest biome? Or do I want to play the wood duck in my water biome? It can be played in either. This is a tough decision because my end goal is to have lots of birds in my hand. So playing it in the water biome would be good for the end goal. However, playing it in this biome, every time I gain food, I'll be able to draw cards, I'll be able to lay eggs, and I'll be able to gain extra food. That's a lot of stuff. So a decision has to be made on what path I want to go down. Now... It's a hard decision, but hmm. I'm not sure what the right decision is. If I look forward to the end, uh, the end of round goals later, I need birds in the water biome for my next end of round goal. So putting it in the water biome here will start to build towards that goal also. Hmm. This is a hard decision, but I think I'm going to play the wood duck in the water biome. Pay the food. Wood duck. Wood ducks nest in tree cavities and wooded areas. All right, two turns left. Green player played a bird and red player also played a bird, both in the forest biome. So if we go and look at what they've played so far. So this is a lay one egg on this bird card. And this here, oh, okay. This guy's got a nice little food engine going as well. And it has an all players gain uh, food effect. So, whoa, I'm bright. Uh, I think we're going to have lots of food uh, looking forward because this guy is going to gain us food when he uses the gain food effect and this guy is gaining us food when he uses the lay eggs effect. So I'm quite happy about this decision now because maybe we won't be using the, lay, uh, the gain food effect as often. All right, so now we have two grubs in hand but no birds. So what do we want to do? Do we want to lay eggs? Do we want to gain food probably no reason to do that or do we want to draw bird cards 
Now, looking forward, we can actually see here, if we click on these tokens, who is leading on the end of round goals. So currently, green player has two eggs laid on birds with that nest. I have one and red has zero. You can see here how many points you score if you finish first, second, or third. And while we're at it, we might go just quickly through what you get points for at the end of the game. So obviously, you get victory points for uh, the feathers on the bird cards itself. This is the uh, end of round goals. This is, sorry, this is the end of round goals. You get victory points. Uh, that's what we're looking at at the moment. Uh, this here is your, what is this here? Uh, bonus cards, there you go. That's your bonus cards. So what I have in my hand, I guess. Yes. Uh, this is eggs. This is cached food, and this is tucked cards under birds. So that's what you get victory points for at the end of the game. All right, so here I think we are going to... If we lay eggs, we can potentially win the goal. If I draw birds, I would be drawing one bird or i could pay an egg to draw a second bird but we're also going to be drawing cards with this effect as well so i, I think I, I don't think i need to discard any eggs um i like the look of the common night hawk bird i think this round let's let's draw a card I'm going to draw the common Nighthawk here, and I'll show you why I like these cards, but that's the card I'm going to draw. Now, we use the when activated effect. Draw two cards. If you do, discard one card from your hand at the end of the turn. I'm going to draw a random card, and maybe another random card. I don't really like either of these two cards that much. Mountain Bluebird, that's interesting. Two random cards. And now I discard a card. Do I want to discard this Mountain Bluebird or this, this Great Crested Flycatcher? Hmm. I've already got a nice little food engine going. I think I'll discard this Great Crested Flycatcher. All right, that's my turn. Goes to green player, goes to red player. Now there's one turn left in this round. What did green player do? They gained food and red player also gained food. When the red player gained food, all players gain one berry from the supply, which is really nice. So nice, it actually allows me to play the Mountain Bluebird straight away. However, Due to its effect, when played, play another bird into the same habitat, pay its normal cost. I probably don't want to do that yet. Probably want to wait till I have a bird that can be played in that habitat. So I can play two birds in one turn. So what we want to do here is we want to work towards this goal here. And we want to lay eggs. So use our last turn to lay eggs. And we want to lay eggs on this bird due to the nest type. And that's my turn. Now we wait. So there we go. We ended up winning the round one goal. We get four victory points for that. We had three eggs laid. Green player had two eggs laid. And red player didn't have any eggs laid on that type of bird. So it's round two now. So we have one less turn each round. Green player goes first. They drew bird cards uh, during their last turns. Now it comes back to me. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm looking here at the cards that we can potentially draw. This music is so calming. <laughs> it is a little bit. 
And I'm thinking here, if we draw a common grackle or a Mississippi kite or both, uh, it'll allow us to really use the mountain bluebird nicely next turn. So I'm going to go ahead and draw cards for my first turn. I'm going to draw the Mississippi kite. And then this trigger, so I get to draw another two cards and discard one at the end of my turn. I think I'm going to draw the common grackle. And a random card. Ring build gull. Now I need to discard one card. Hmm. It's actually a hard decision. So I want to keep this because I can make use out of it. I can play that for free with the Mountain Bluebird. The Grackle. I think we want more water birds to keep our card drawing engine going. So I actually don't mind the ring build gull. And I like the... So I think we actually get rid of the grackle here. Alright. This is good. I'm liking this engine that we've got going here. So six turns left. What have they done? One gained food and another gained food. So when the red play gained food, we all gain a berry from the supply, which is very nice. Now... Going to go ahead and show you how you can make use of the mountain bluebird so i can play in my egg laying biome and when played play another bird into the same habitat pay its normal cost so i'm then going to pay uh, play the mississippi kite in the normal habitat in the same habitat sorry i'll have to pay a grub for it but i will have a grub left over and i'll need to pay an egg as well and there's eggs here to be paid so Let's go ahead and pay. Mountain bluebird. These birds can be found from prairies up to alpine zones above tree line. Then it says play a second bird in your uh, grain biome, pay its normal cost. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Mississippi kite in that biome also. Now it's telling me to spend an egg. Go ahead and pay an egg. And that's my turn. Achievement unlocked. Build two birds with one stone. There you go. Five turns left in this round. What has our opponents done? They've drawn bird cards and gained food. Man, this red play is gaining a lot of food because we're gaining a lot of free berries. Look at this guy's food supply. He's got nine food there to use. Why isn't he playing any bird cards? Maybe he's just like storing food to have a massive few rounds where he plays heaps of birds seems weird though you probably want to play birds as soon as possible to make your engine more effective okay there's one food left in the bird feeder it is a mouse what we want at the moment is we want grubs and anything works for the ring build gull You can also lay three eggs every time we use the lay eggs ability now. And we and when we do that, we roll all the dice not in the bird feeder. So there's four dice currently not in the bird feeder. If any of them are mice, we gain a mice and catch a cash it on this card. So we hunt mice. I think we want to gain food, re-roll. So we can get this uh, common Nighthawk out as soon as possible. So let's re-roll the dice here. We're not going to take that mouse. Alright, look at that. So we got plenty of berries, plenty of grubs, plenty of grain. We'll gain one grain. Keep in mind we're going to gain another grain when we trigger the yellow-bellied sapsucker effect. Sorry, another grub. I was saying grain. I'm not sure why. Um... Now, if we look forward to birds, we might want to draw. They all require 
Well, these birds require more grubs, so maybe we just... Let's just take another grub. Click on birds to lay eggs. So looking forward to goals in the future, we need to lay eggs on birds in the grain biome. So let's go ahead and do that on this mountain bluebird. We gain a free grub from the supply and that's our turn. Green player, red player take their turns. Green player laid eggs and red player drew bird cards. So when the green player laid eggs, all players gain a grub from the supply. Gaining a lot of grubs. All right, now we have enough food to play this common Nighthawk. We can play the Nighthawk in any biome we want. And how, why I like the Nighthawk is every time, so you play it in a biome, but every time you use that biome's effect, you can then move the common Nighthawk to another biome, another habitat, which makes that habitat's effect stronger for the future as well. As long as it's the right most cards of all birds in that habitat currently. So, we could go ahead and play it here if we want to um, draw more bird cards in the next few turns. We could play the ringed build gull straight after as well. So maybe we don't want to play it in that biome. Maybe we want to play it. Let's see. Oh, Doggo's trying to get in the room. One second. Come in. The dog scratches at the door when she wants to come in. All right. She's in. Hmm. So I think my next two uh, turns are planned out. Play Nighthawk, play Gull. It's what we want to do after that turn. Might be draw bird cards, might be gain more food. Might be lay eggs. Maybe we can play the uh, ring build gull first then. Use a berry and a grub. And then play that next to it potentially. Hmm. Let's do that. Let's play the ring build gull. We'll pay a berry and a grub. We need to spend an egg to play him. Ring builds gull. These gulls steal food Perfect. and eggs from other birds and scavenge at garbage dumps. Three turns left. He laid eggs and he played a bird. All players gain one grub from the supply. More grubs coming my way. Then I'm going to play this common Nighthawk, I think, in the draw bird cards biome. And we need to spend an egg. Common Nighthawk. So running out of eggs to spend, we've got two left. Flying insects at dawn and dusk. Two turns left. Gain food. All right, so looking at the goal here, we've actually got the most birds currently in water, so we're doing really well. Now, we don't have any bird cards left. We have um, a berry and two grubs left over. But I think we want to draw some bird cards. The Screech Owl, we can play pretty well straight away. I don't like any of these cards a great deal, if I'm honest, but let's draw birds. Let's take the owl and a random one from the top. Okay. Move common Nighthawk to another habitat. I think we will do that. And I think we might use it. 
uh, move it to whatever we want to do next turn, I guess. So, do we want to lay eggs next turn? Do we want to gain food next turn? Let's lay eggs next turn. So we move him to the that biome, tuck a card from hand. So I can tuck a card from my hand behind the ring build gull. And if I do, I draw a card. Let's tuck the Eastern Screech Owl and then draw another card. The Tufted Titmouse played in the forest and can use berries, grubs, or grain. Play another bird into the same habitat, pay its normal cost. Now, draw two cards. If I do, discard one card from your hand at the end of your turn. So you can see how this engine has now been built, and I'm just drawing a lot of cards here. So I got a dark-eyed Junko. I don't mind that one at all. Or a Canada Goose. Discard a grain to tuck two cards from the deck behind this bird and tuck a card from your hand behind this bird if you do gain one grain from the supply. These cards work in conjunction real nicely. So let's get rid of this tufted tip mouse, I think. Discard this tip mouse. All right. One turn left. This is my last turn. I've decided I'm going to uh, lay eggs this turn. I can I can spend an extra food to lay a fourth egg if I want to. How many dice not in the bird feeder? Only one. So this Mississippi kite isn't going to get great value out of his effect. But that's okay. And let's look to the future for where we want to lay our eggs. We want to lay them all in this habitat because of the next end goal. Happy with that. I want to move him to the water biome because of my goal uh, let's roll the dice i rolled a grain so i didn't get any mice for the mississippi kite it's unfortunate and that's it so we come first in the round two goal beautiful so we've come first in both goals and if we look forward to round three we're currently coming first in that goal as well so now it's round three. I'm the second player. So what are we going to do here now? So I like the goose and the dark eyed junko. They work really nice together. I need lots of grain though to play them. Hmm. Well, there's lots of grain in the feeder currently. So maybe I go ahead and do that. Sure. Let's gain two food. We'll take both the grain. Thank you very much. We can lay an egg now on a bird that's laid on the kite we gain a free grub from the supply happy days that's our turn done five turns left what have our opponents done drawn birds and drawn birds so both of them have drawn birds from here are these worth playing Discard a grain. Tuck a card from your hand if you do gain a grain. They work really nicely together, I must say. I think we want to pl play this one first. And I think we want them to be in the same biome, right? Do we? both in the egg laying biome let's do it let's play this uh, spend an egg 
dark-eyed Junko. Junko's summer in the cool woods, but will use more open habitats in the winter. Green and red player takes their turns, draw birds and laid eggs. Now we don't have enough grain to play this goose. But if I then lay eggs now and tuck a card from my hand behind this bird, I'll gain a grain from the supply. Which is nice. So let's lay some eggs here. Uh, lay it on you. Tuck a card. Let's tuck that card there. Yep, we'll gain a grain. Roll three dice outside the bird feeder. So there is a chance to catch a mouse here. No mouse, unfortunately. That's my turn done. Alright, we're speeding through to the end now. Someone's played a bird and draw... Uh, drew bird cards. Alright, we can now play this Canada, uh, Canada Goose. So I think we want to. We'll have to pay two eggs this time to play it. Uh, let's pay it from anything that's not in this habitat, ideally. Okay, everything's in this habitat currently. We're so far ahead in this goal anyway, I don't think it'll matter. Canada Goose. The oldest known wild Canada Goose was at least 33 years old. It's pretty old. Two turns left. Someone played a bird and gained food, and when that player gained food, we all gain a berry. So now we need to have an eye on our end of game goal. We need to have lots of birds in our hand if we want to gain our um, end of game goal. So I probably got to think now to, uh, to start drawing bird cards. We don't really need food, but we need bird cards. We can give up an egg to draw an extra bird card as well, which which actually might be worth doing. So I'm going to move this to this biome and then like lay lots of eggs next turn. So let's get rid of an egg to draw a third bird card. Now what do we want to do here? This is easy to play, so maybe worth. It's worth four victory points as well, so we'll take that one. Let's take another two from the top of the deck. Uh, let's move that into the egg-laying biome, because that's what we're going to do next turn. Let's tuck a bird behind this card. Uh... I think the only one we really want to keep is the turn. Let's tuck the goldfinch. And then we draw another card. Osprey. Then draw two cards. If you do, discard one from your hand at the end of the turn. Let's draw another two from the top of the deck. And then discard a card. Probably want to start keeping the the birds that are the easiest to play for us and are worth points. Hmm. Let's get rid of this burrowing owl, shall we? Alright, our engine's ticking along nicely. In one turn, we've been able to put four birds into our hand as well as tuck some cards they both played birds if we look at our goal we are likely to still win it but i'm still going to lay eggs here lay four eggs so then i'm going to be able to oh i play these in the wrong order i need the wheat to discard it ah uh, well, that's a shame. I'll be able to do it better next time. How many... 
Only one dice, not in the bird feeder. Hmm. Maybe I don't do that then. Maybe I play a card. Can I play anything? I can play this black turn here. In the water biome. Let's do that. Give up a grub. Let's do it. Spend an egg. Alright, I might not win my goal by doing this, actually, but I'm taking a risk. Did they lay eggs? Uh, we gained a free grub. Great. Let's see. I ended up winning it anyway, so it worked out quite well for me. Now we have to set our sights on the last goal of the game, which is sets of eggs in water, um, forest, and the grass biome. Five turns left. So now we need to start laying eggs on our, on our, on our birds and drawing cards for our end of game goal. So we can actually look and check what our score is currently. But we won't worry too much about that just yet. So let's go... We still don't have weights. I still think we do this and then move. But where to? What is worth more to us at the moment? Is it laying eggs? I think it is for the end of game goal. And we need to draw cards as well. So let's lay eggs. Let's give up, discard a food to lay an extra egg. So we're laying five eggs here. Now we have lots of eggs in this biome, so we need to start laying eggs in the other biomes. And then we'll move it to the water biome. Discard one grain to tuck two cards from the deck behind this bird. I would love to do that, but I can't. Tuck a card from your hand behind this bird if you do gain one grain from the supply. I can do that one. Uh, let's tuck the osprey behind the bird there. Gain a grain. We'll roll the one dice. No, no mice. The Mississippi kite is going hungry at the moment. Can't seem to find any mice. So this round will end pretty quickly, only four turns left. Someone laid eggs, so we all gain grain, uh, a grub from the supply. So now we might go ahead and draw more bird cards. Three bird cards, and then we'll be able to draw more from here as well. So let's do that. Uh, this is easy to play. Can actually play this as well, but I don't think I have that many birds with that nest. One, two, three, four. Actually, it's not too bad. We'll keep it, and we'll draw one from the top. Um, what biome do we want to move this to? Probably the this biome again. We just want to alternate between laying eggs and drawing cards. Uh, draw one card if you do discard one card from your hand at the end of the turn. Let's do it. Uh, tuck a bird card from your hand behind this bird if you do draw a card. Uh, let's tuck something I'm definitely not going to play. Just this. Draw a card. And then draw two more cards. 
and discard one at the end of my turn. I don't think we're going to play this. Oh, we might do, actually. We're not playing that card. Wait, do I have to discard two cards? Wait, why am I discarding two cards? Cards left, two. Oh, I have to discard oh, one from the black turn as well. Okay. I understand. So I'll discard that. And that. Understood. So now we have six birds in our hand. So if we look at our goal, we get four points for having five to seven, which we would currently be getting. We have eight plus, we get seven points at the end of the game for our end of game goal if we look at this one we need more sets of eggs do we want to play something is the question we might do so next turn but for now let's lay some more eggs let's think about what we need to keep When played, lay an egg on each of your birds with that nest. That's not bad, you know. Hmm. Okay, we definitely need to keep two grubs and a berry there. And a grub. Oh no, or a grain potentially as well. So let's just get rid of... Wait, do we need to discard another? I don't think we do. I don't think we need to do this anyway. Let's lay eggs. So that's... There's five eggs there, right? There's only two here. What about the top row? Three. So if we put one more here. Move it to the draw cards. Discard one uh, grain to tuck two birds from the deck behind this bird. Yes, please. And then if I tuck a bird from your hand behind this bird, I gain a grain from the supply. So that works really nicely. Let's tuck that one. Gain a grain. Roll dice. No mice again. All right going well for us we've got two turns left we are now equal first in this end of round goal so we can play We can play a bird here and then use the last turn to uh, to draw cards. So I think I want to play this Ash Throated Flycatcher because it's going to lay an egg on four birds, right? One, two. Three, four. So that's worth four points. I'm going to have to pay two to actually play it. But then it's also worth four points by itself. So it's going to be worth six points playing this card. Which is pretty good. So let's play it. Um, 
food that you keep for the end of the game aren't worth anything. Click on a bird from any habitat to spend the eggs. Uh, so we got five here, four here. So let's spend this one because I'm going to lay it on that bird anyway. And then another one of these maybe. Yeah. Ash-throated flycatcher. Yes, we want to use the ability. To dry places. They get all their right, look at that. From their We've laid four free eggs, which is going to help us with this goal as well. We're now leading with the last goal. All right, this is our last turn. So now we want to look at our end of game goal and try and get the eight plus birds in my hand for the end of round, end of game goal. So let's let's do that. Let's draw cards, doesn't matter what we draw because we're not going to be playing any of them anyway. Move it to another habitat. Doesn't actually matter here. So we can skip the power this time. Draw a card if I do discard one at the end of my turn. Again, this effect doesn't matter for us this turn. So I'll skip it. Tuck a card to draw a card. I definitely want to do that because tuck cards are worth something. And then draw a card. And draw two cards. And if I do discard one at the end of the turn, yes, please. I want to draw as many cards as possible. Now I need to discard a card. So what am I going to be left with? Eight. Exactly eight. Which is perfect for my end of game goal which will get me a bonus seven points. So this has gone swimmingly. We end up winning every single round goal. Now this is the end of game scoring. So this is points for the amount of uh, points on the bird cards themselves. So green player did really well there. This is bonuses, green won that as, as well. End of round goals, we're gonna clean up with end of round goals. This is eggs on birds. We just won that one. And there it is. There it is, your winner. So that went almost as well as we could have hoped and we can get a detailed overview of the amount of points. So for the amount of points on the bird cards themselves, we're actually the worst at that. We only scored 37 points in comparison to Green who scored 48. However, we can see here on the end of round goals how well we did for that. 22 points in end of round goals. Green only scored 9 points there. We did pretty well on eggs as well. 16 eggs. Red did okay on eggs as well. 16 and green got 14 points there. But we then actually scored 9 points in tucked bird cards as well, which came in handy at the end. Green didn't score any in that category. So, that is hopefully a good example of how you play uh, Wingspan, the digital edition. It is very similar to uh, to the, uh, the board game. Obviously, they've done their best to um, adapt it to suit the digital version, which I think they've done uh, quite a good job. Once you get used to the interface and the AI, um, it, it flows quite nicely. Uh, I don't notice myself taking too much interest in what the other players are doing, but to be fair, that's kind of like real life as well. Except in real life, you're obviously waiting for each player to take their turn, so you're noticing a lot more what their focuses are. Whereas in this, um, you don't. You're always kind of thinking about yourself the whole time. You're not really thinking too much about what the other players are doing. Or maybe you do, but at least in the first three games I've played of the digital version, I haven't thought too much about that. Um, and yeah, that is Wingspan Digital uh, Edition. What does Replay do? Replay? No? Mini Overview? Hello? All right. I will save that because that was a good game for us. And that's it. That's uh, the digital adaptation of Wingspan. 
game by stone my games i uh, hope you enjoyed that playthrough hope you learned something about how to play the game as well um thank you for those on twitch who tuned in to to watch live um and for those of you uh who are watching on youtube hopefully it helps you learn the game if you're already familiar with the game hopefully you enjoyed the playthrough itself i will be doing another recording on uh, playing an online game as well so you guys can see how that works an online game does take a lot longer due to having to wait um, between turns of players uh, but it obviously the difficulty is is much higher than playing ai i find as well so uh anyway thank you all for uh watching um i'm josh from the tabletop nights and i'll see you next time